Charlemagne in USA. All right. Charlemagne got some technical difficulties. It's Monday. Back to the work week. Hopefully you guys are feeling good today. How y'all feeling? How was y'all weekend? What is going on? Now, I am broadcasting from home today because um, this is going to sound nasty, but I have to get my colon checked. All right, colonoscopy is what they call it. And uh, when you do that, they give you these pills. And after you take these pills within 30 minutes, like every five, 10 minutes, you're on the toilet. You are on the toilet. And uh, any uh, person out there listening, any male that's, uh, I would say, over the age of 35, definitely get yourself checked. And then your doctor will tell you what you need to do and how you need to do it. Now, that is the same thing that uh, killed Chadwick Boseman, colon cancer. So I am definitely uh, high, highly sensitive on anything out there. So I get myself checked on everything. I don't care what it is. I use my health insurance to the full capacity. So I am going today to get my uh, colonoscopy. Like I said, they uh, in the procedure, I'm just telling you guys, I know a lot of people are scared. A lot of people don't want to do it. A lot of people say, oh, that's gay. No. If you find out early, it could definitely save your life. So they give you these pills. You have to take it twice. So yesterday, as I was watching the cow, and then you go, they stick like, I guess, a, a, a tube or a camera up your butt. And they check to make sure that, you know, there's no polyps or uh, it's nothing cancerous or any bumps or anything like that. And that is the procedure. So that is what I'm doing today. And that is the reason why I'm home today. Because if not, in between breaks, I will be running to the bathroom to figure that out. Now, uh, Charlemagne, we're trying to get him connected. He was connected. He could uh, He can speak. But he couldn't hear us, so we're just trying to get that together, all right? Now, we got front page news next. We're going to be talking about a lot. Front page news, of course, we got to talk about the Monterey Park shooting and sports. I don't know if your favorite team won or your favorite team lost, but I'm still on F the, F the Eagles and F the Cowboys all week long. All right. And then, of course, Sherry Shepard, comedian Sherry Shepard, will be joining us. Drop a bomb for Sherry Shepard. Of course, she has her new talk show. She's a comedian. And we're going to be kicking it with her in a little bit. So let's get the show cracking. Front page news is next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. Now, in NFL scores. All right, my Giants will be home early vacation. The Eagles beat the Giants 38-7. Eddie, who is a Giants fan, F you. Uh, the Chiefs beat the Jaguars 27-20. The Bengals beat the Bills 27-10, and the Cowboys lost to the 49, 49ers 19-12. Now, a uh, Cowboys kicker missed his fifth point after, which is crazy. Uh, so he missed five in a row. So that is your front page news. So it looks like we're going to be seeing the Bengals versus the 49ers and the Eagles versus the Chiefs. Well, other way around, but you know what I mean? The Eagles versus the 49ers and the Bengals versus the Chiefs. Now, uh, in some sad news, over the weekend, Saturday night, there was a, a party at a Star Ballroom dance studio out in California. And uh, this was a Lunar New Year's festival. And Wu Can Tran, the 72-year-old's name, uh, they believed he went in there and started shooting. Wound up killing 10 people, and we have actual audio. The white van entered a shopping center parking lot. When officers exited their patrol vehicle to contact the occupant, they heard one gunshot coming from within the van. Two armored vehicles responded and were able to restrict the van's movement. At 12.52 p.m., our sheriff's uh, SWAT team approached and cleared the van and determined the suspect sustained a self-inflicted gunshot wound and was pronounced dead at the scene. The suspect has been identified as who can Tran. He is a 72-year-old male Asian. That there are no outstanding suspects from the mass shooting incident that occurred in the city of Monterey Park. Now, they don't know why he did it. Uh, the reason they, his neighbors actually spoke and said he there was nothing crazy. It was nothing odd. They didn't see anything at all. Do we have uh, audio of the neighbor? Pat Ross says he was a dance instructor, but didn't know much else about him. He says he lived alone. You just don't know day to day what who's who and what's what you know it's he didn't strike me as having a, an angry bone in his body but that's just seeing him coming and going so I, I don't know but yeah it's a little unnerving yeah so rest in peace uh to anybody that that passed away and condolences to any of the families out there that's so sad and you just don't know what's going to make somebody snap you know we always talk about trying to avoid crazy or avoid somebody snapping but you just don't know 72 year old dance instructor just out the blue and nobody has a reason why as of yet 
Uh, lastly, if you've been shopping, if you've been grocery shopping, you notice the prices of eggs have been going crazy. And that's because a combination of the deadliest bird flu outbreak in U.S. history and supply chain. So uh, eggs are, are, are shot up from, I think, like two dollars to over five dollars in some places and over seven and twelve dollars in some places. They said that now they said in Mexico, they're saying that they have been smuggling eggs over the U.S. border. Damn near more than drugs. How crazy is that? So forget the marijuana, the coke and whatever else they smuggle over guns and weapons. They're saying egg smuggling has soared 60 percent in December, which is wild. All right. And that is your front page news. Now, Charlemagne, uh, he's there. We're just trying to get him on. He can uh, he can speak, but he can't hear us. So he can talk. But we, we're trying to get it so he can actually hear us. And hopefully we'll work that out in the next 30 seconds, the next 60 seconds. All right? But get it off your chest. You there, Charlemagne? Oh, you can hear me now? I can hear you. Oh, word. Okay. All right. We're in business then. All right. Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's a new day. This is your time to get it off your chest. Wake, wake up. Whether you're mad or blessed. It's time to get up and get something. Call up now. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Good morning, this is Lima from Philly. Lima, oh boy. Congratulations, Lima. What you want, Lima? <laughs> Congratulations if you're Thank an Eagles you. fan. Thank you. First of all, I don't like how y'all tried to make it seem like I was finessing. That's not fair. Why would we think you was finessing? Because you're going to say, um, and I was telling you about what I was going through, and DJ Envy lied about his uh, disability claim. Y'all going to try to say I was finessing the system. I don't even remember what you're talking about. What are you talking congratulations, about, congratulations, congratulations. Yeah, we just talking about congratulations too. on the Eagles winning. Oh, yes. But congratulations also, on finessing the system as well. <laughs> I'm not finessing the system. For real. Um, all right, no, but seriously. So, do um, you know the Bank of America and the Zell thing? Like, when yep. people was calling. And, okay, so do we think that was another tap to the dog? I do. I said that. I thought that was another cyber a, a, a cyber attack. Somebody tapping America's jaw right now, just letting us letting us know it can go down. I think so too. And real quick, I just want to promote. Um, I'm starting a podcast, and we gonna talk about stuff like that. How our government out here acting like a whole f boy to you know, like you know, everything. So what's it gonna be called? The, the, the John Podcast? No, I call, it's called the Intellectual the Intellectually Opinionated Podcast. <laughs> Okay, okay, IOP. All right. Well, thank you, Lima. Hello, who's this? Yo, yo, NG, yo, what up, Charlamagne? What up? It's Low, man. What's good? Peace. Mo, Lowe. what up? Get How it off your you, chest. Man? Yeah, I just be I just be tight that these jobs, man, they be quick to suspend you or quick to like restrict you and then they take twenty years or they drag their feet to bring you back, bro. Like, yo, I ain't do nothing. I'm good. What's up? Give me, give me why did they suspend you? Talking about? Why, why did they suspend nah, you? I'm, Nah, they, nah, I work in the group homes and all that. You know what I mean? So these, they, they could just call in the case on you and, and, and you get suspended and all that. But yo, listen, man. To everybody out there that got kids in, they, in that group home and all that, yo, get them kids out as best as you can, man. As hard as you can. Get those kids out. This group home stuff is crazy, B. Well, I mean, they're in the group home because they don't really have any other options at the moment. So it's not as simple as saying get them out. Nah, bro. Let me tell you something. You say that now, but listen, a lot of these kids be putting their own selves in these places. In these places, girl, they be straight mm, lying, and then they get put in these places. So listen, mm. man, love your kids and, and be around for your kids, man. Because this, this is not it, man. This generation is over, Lord. Yo, cowgirls, later. <laughs> See y'all later. First of all, stop, stop misgendering my team, okay? I don't know why y'all just be out here misgendering people for no reason. Hello, who's this? Yeah, it's Richie Rich from Jersey, man. <laughs> Richie Rich from Jersey sound depressed. You must be a Giants fan. No, Cowboys fan. These guys, man, they keep disappointing me every year, man. Twenty oh, years and counting. Twenty-seven 20 plus years. years and counting. Twenty tw twenty-seven exactly, sir. Yeah, yeah, man. They, I mean, I'm eating my garlic to my blood pressure. So I'm gonna okay. have another no. couple cloves of garlic with my blood pressure. No, you can't let them do that to know. you, my brother. Listen to your uncle Charlotte. Right. I told y'all two weeks ago. I'm not delusional about my Cowboys. I had zero expectations for them. Okay, I didn't think they would beat the Bucks because of Dak Prescott's inconsistency and the fact the defense got shaky over the last few weeks of the regular season. In the playoffs, the defense showed up, even though yesterday we couldn't stop the run. But Dak was absolute garbage yesterday. And once Tony Pollard went down, I know I know we didn't have a chance, but I didn't think we had a chance to begin with. So what are y'all yeah, doing with your well, kicker? 
What do you do well, with the kicker? I, I, think kicker? Jer- I think Jerry should just step back and just let someone else run the team. I don't even he know if it's involved. Well, you know, I agree with that, but but it's not just Jerry. We need a coach. Mike McCarthy got to go, Thank and you, we sir. need a coach that is able to come in and bring his own system and instill discipline in that team without Jerry's interference at all. And what about well, your kicker? What do you I do with the kicker? Starts, the kicker I think it starts fine. with the boy one. Did he miss another up, up here? Uh, another uh, no, man. The kicker got his, he got his nah. he got his first field goal blocked yesterday, and then after that, he was the only reason that we even stayed in the game. The, uh, that kick, Amar gave us four six points yesterday. I'm fine mm-hmm. with Bar. All right. Well, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's totally night and day. Like, they, they act like what Biden did was just a my bad. But when it was Trump, his criminal investigations and, you know, he's, he's so, even Biden said, oh, he's so irresponsible. How could you be so irresponsible? That's what we're asking now. That's what we're asking about you, President Biden. Hello, who's this? Uh, Clint from Alabama. Hey, what's up, Clint? Get it off your chest. Man, I, I got a question. Uh, yes, the thought just ran through my head. They okay. said there's a shortage, there's shortage of chickens, right? I mean, shortage of eggs because of the bird flu, right? Correct. All right. So why is there not a shortage of chicken? I thought it was a shortage of chicken. I think it is a shortage of chicken as well. Okay, I'm asking that. That's the question I want that. So, no, no, I think it's a shortage question. of chicken as well and a shortage yeah, last, of eggs. Last year, it was definitely a chicken shortage. Well, I remember last year, it was a shortage of chicken. Well, we but, know why there's not a sh- what, what, but you know why there's not a shortage of chickens. They can, they made they 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 uh, genetically modify chickens. Oh man, <laughs> that's even worse. <laughs> but you know this though. But we now, come on. Well, we are we know that because the wings are bigger, the, the legs are bigger. Yeah, I, I mean, we know this. So yeah, they get a chicken with BBL. Oh, uh, that's crazy, man. Don't tell them what we're putting in our bodies, right? Right. Yep. But, right. Thank you, brother. But, Hey, I get, think it off, get it off your chest 800-585-1051 If you need to vent You can hit us up right now Now when we come back We got your rumor report Black Eyed Peas Are suing over poop Yep poop We'll get to it next It's The Breakfast Club Good morning The Breakfast Club Morning everybody It's DJ NV Charlemagne the guy We are The Breakfast Club It's a hey, Monday you know Happy need, Monday hmm? You know what we need What we need we need the LGBTQ plus community to come to the defense of the Cowboys, okay? Because for years, folks have been misgendering the Cowboys, calling them cowgirls. And this morning, I'm seeing a lot of that, a lot of, a lot of misgendering of America's Yo, team. Up. So could someone from the LGBTQ Disney plus community please say something? All right, where's the alphabet gang when you need them? We need y'all shut right now. Shut up. Let's get to the rumors. Let's talk Black Eyed Peas. Rumor has it, rumor, rumor has it. Call out a name or you gossiping or you chatty right, patty. I'm gossiping. This is the rumor report. I mean, I guess we on The Breakfast Club. This is where the tea spills, right? Yes. Right. On The Breakfast Club. Now, Black Eyed Peas are suing the Poopsie Slime Surprise, which is a brand of slime poop and unicorn that currently retails for $100 to $300 on Amazon. And the reason that they're suing is we all remember the My Humps hit that Black Eyed Peas did a couple of years ago. All right. Well, uh, the Poopsie Slime Surprise actually did it over. Uh, and they're not saying they did it over, but this is their song. I don't understand the obsession with poop. Like, it's quite a few things in my house over the last couple of years that, you know, my kids have that are poop scented. And I don't understand the obsession with poop. Remember back in the day they would say uh, poop stays in the bathroom? Yes. I don't understand why everything's a poop scented toy now. They got the unicorn that poops. They got this they still got this one little bird that you feed and then the bird dances and then the bird poops. Like what what's the obsession with poop, man? I I, I don't know as I just left the toilet from pooping because I've been pooping all yesterday and pooping all morning. Well, because you get uh, a colonoscopy. Yeah, I'm getting a colonoscopy, so I had to take the test and and it's some poops. Like you you poop in water. Like it's just I straight. told you that. Shh. What? You thought you was gonna come to work this morning. I said there is no way that you, I, th- I told you the prep is the hardest part. I did I did a colonoscopy over the holidays. The prep is the hardest part. You was not gonna come to work and then have a three p.m. colonoscopy appointment. You out of your damn mind. You gotta be. I'm, I'm surprised you can even get through a break without running to the bathroom. No, well I have to take my second pill in about another uh, nine o'clock. Well, twelve sets because oh, you gotta you take twelve taking- sets of pools. Yeah, I gotta take twelve this morning at nine thirty. You still taking? Oh, you know what? I started. I did mine different though. I did mine. My colonoscopy was early, early in the morning. That's why. 
No, I had like a 7 o'clock so. appointment. 7 a.m. Yeah, mine is at 3. So I got to take it at oh, okay. 9. So okay. I'll be pooping a little more. All right. Now we got to talk about Drake. Drake performed at the Apollo Theater in, in Harlem, New York, uh, which was pretty dope. He brought out a bunch of legends. Uh, people were actually, a lot of people were actually in the stands and watching him. I seen uh, Ice Spice was there. Kevin Durant was there. Uh, Justin and Halle Bieber. Odell Beckham Jr. Michael Rubin. I seen the mayor of New York City. Uh, Eric Adams was there. I seen the judge. Uh, not a real judge but you know Aaron Judge for, from the New York Yankees and he brought out a couple of people he brought out the diplomats and this is the reason why these guys right here from Harlem made us dress different talk different walk different rap different all the way in Canada so please the pride of New York to me make some mother noise for the dip set one time and yo by the way this is Cam's actual mate, by the way. I just want to make that clear. I didn't just get some new made. This is the real one. Which and Cam preserved that make all those years, huh? Yeah. Okay. Which is pretty dope. He also bought out 21 Savage. We got audio of that. 21. Can you do something for me? Can you talk to the opposite for me? 21. Do you think? Say what? Yellow diamonds in the white. Yeah. Crowd went crazy. Uh, he also brought out uh, Uzi, little Uzi Vert on uh, Sunday, on yesterday. Now, I was really liking the way they did that show. You know, usually you do it in concerts, you do it in venues that hold 18, 20,000, but I love the, the small venues. It felt more packed, it felt close, it felt together. I, I like the small venues. And it's the Apollo, man. It's a legendary venue. Mm -hmm. Is the log still there? Did somebody rub the log before they came out? Pause. But the log never moved, so I'm sure the log was still there. And also, NYPD was taping everybody as they were uh, leaving and coming out. So any, anybody that went into that show, you know, they were out the, outside with the uh, the camera phone taping everybody. And that's probably because they have that, that software that can identify faces for warrants and stuff like that. But they were taping anybody that went in that, that venue last night. Anybody that went in or anybody that came out? Both went in and went out. Oh, okay. All right. Now, what also, lastly, uh, hmm. Tell me about the dude who tried to fly last night, the Drake fan. Oh well, yeah, there was. A, well, he didn't try to fly. Uh, he was actually Drake was performing, and somebody fell off the top balcony, and Drake did what he was supposed to. He stopped the show and made sure dude was okay. Yeah. 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 All right. Just gotta make sure somebody's okay. Make sure somebody's okay. Oh, I think we forget that Drake fans are owls. You know what I'm what saying? They're owls, you know, and, and, and sometimes owls fall out of a tree because, you know, they be learning how to fly. That's what baby owls do. If you see a baby owl on the ground, it's because the baby owl was just learning to fly. So it's going to spend some time on the ground. It's just a normal part of life. It takes them some days, a few weeks to actually learn how to fly. All right. Well, that is your rumor report. Now, when we come back, uh, your tax refund will likely be a lot smaller this year. We'll let you know why. So don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Looking to turn a small bet into a big payday? With DraftKings Sportsbook, same game parlays. You can pocket more cash when you can buy multiple bets from one game. Download the app. Sign up with code ENVY. That's E-N-V-Y. And get a special offer. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page hey, man, news. We gotta stop playing that record, man. The only time Why? that record should be played is at the end of Wakanda forever. Okay? Mm -hmm. Any other time we hear that record is too depressing. Well, she's gonna be performing I, I hope at she the don't Super do that Bowl. at the Super Bowl. Please I'm sure she don't will. do that. Man, please don't do lift me up at the Super Bowl. Lift me up puts puts me down. Well, don't worry, your team won't be there, so uh, Neither will you yours. ain't got to worry about Shut it. Shut up. Don't start that. I do not. There's only four people that can talk right now, and that's Bengals fans. Um, who 49ers they fans, 49ers Eagles fans, fans, and Chiefs fans. Chiefs fans and Eagles. Everybody else, shut up, including you Giants fans. Shut the F up forever. Knock it off. And you shut season. up, too. Well, the 49ers beat the... 49ers beat the Cowboys last night, uh, 19 to 12. The and the Bengals Eagles beat, the, beat the Giants, 103 to 7. Doesn't matter. Loss is a loss. It doesn't matter how much you lose by. Nobody says, well, we almost won. No, you lost. We lost. No, 38 to 7. That was the score. I, ain't, I don't care either way, though. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I told you I the Jaguars. No 27-20. So the Eagles will be taking on the 49ers, and the Chiefs will be taking on the Bengals. All right. I'm not delusional about my Cowboys. On Friday, you was in here, oh, the, Gi the Giants going to spank the Eagles. The Giants going to bust the Eagles' ass. I'm like, bro, what are you talking about? I got to have I hope. 
No, you don't. Yes, you do. <laughs> you can deal with reality. You can root. I root for my team, but I deal with reality as well. I know who we are. Well, you remember, uh, I think about a week ago, two weeks ago, we were talking about the six-year-old boy in Virginia that shot uh, his teacher. Well, now they're saying that they actually had a lot of signs that this kid was, uh, you know, unstable and, and should be getting some help. So the teacher warned the boy that, uh, warned and said that the boy said this to the teacher, that he wanted to light a teacher's body on fire and then watch her die. So they knew this that's, before that's the young man, uh, before the boy pulled a, a gun out on a teacher. And also they had actual tips that the boy had a six year uh, a gun that day in school. So they're trying to feel, you know, file, you know, figure out, you know, what went wrong. How come none of this stuff was reported? How come they couldn't find out any of this stuff until after the incident actually took place? Yeah, I don't believe that they knew that that little boy had a gun in school. Like, there, there, there's, there's no way there was a report of a six year old having a gun in school and uh, nothing was done. And, and even when you say, you know, there were signs, you still don't expect a six year old to come to the school busing. You know, what I mean, like you could say that signs and he might be disturbed and he may be in need of some you know some type of psychiatric help but you don't you still don't expect him to come to the school busting at six years old i mean if if, if the six-year-old says he wants to light a teacher's body on fire and watch the body burn until they die that student should get help immediately like yeah, immediately. psychiatric help 100 percent. but you still don't, I, I agree with that 100 percent. but you still i don't think nobody's thinking this six-year-old is gonna come to school and start shooting i i've, I've never heard this before like this to me this is a new precedent you Not know it. Now, they also saying the superintendent, George Parker, said the school had received a tip that the boy had a gun that day, but then failed to uncover the weapon after searching his school bag. So I guess they, they actually looked, but I, I guess he hit it. So where did he have a gun at? Six-year-olds don't, don't have lockers, do they? I don't think so, no. Where the hell could a six-year-old hide a gun? And what the hell is going on in this country, man? In this world? Know. Well, now they're saying your tax refund will be a lot smaller this year. Now, here are the uh, reasons why. They're saying it's going to be smaller refunds because of shrunken tax credits and deductions. And they're saying also because inflation, higher debt loads are biting into budget. So people will not be getting those huge checks as they usually did, which is insane. And lastly, uh, Joe Biden. <laughs> Joe Biden talks about some more documents, uh, classified documents that they found. We found a handful of documents were failed, uh, were filed in the wrong place. We immediately turned them over to the archives of the Justice Department. We're fully cooperating, looking forward to getting this resolved quickly. I think you're going to find there's nothing there. I have no regrets. I'm following what the lawyers have told me. They want exactly what we're doing. There's no there there. Thank you. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. but that was after the first set of documents were found, right? That audio. No, that should have been that should have been the, the new documents that ju they just found. I don't think that was the new documents. They found documents three more times since then. They found more classified documents uh, this weekend after the Correct. FBI searched his Delaware home. I, was that was that after this weekend? That should have been after this weekend, but which is crazy to me. Regardless, it, all these different places they're finding documents, and it's uh, that's light work. There's no problem that, with this. That's the thing that bothers me the most about this is how the liberal media and liberal personalities are reacting to this. When it was Trump and classified documents, they literally were acting like the sky is falling. Now when it's Biden, they're acting like, oh, well, my bad. And this is why you should never take folks like that seriously. And you should also remember how inconsistent people are in times like this because you realize they don't care about truth. They care about their party. And you can't trust people like that. If you're a liberal who can't call BS on Democrats when they do something wrong, then your voice can't be trusted. Now, are they mad uh, about the documents or are they mad that, you know, Trump didn't uh, speak to the FBI about the documents? Because I would assume that they would be mad that classified information is not where it's supposed to be. That's what they well, should be mad about. Right. Well, once again, if you go back and you uh, remember when the stuff first happened with Trump, it was all about the documents, the documents, the documents, the documents. Now they're saying that, you know, it's about the obstruction. They're saying that's the difference between Trump and Biden. Uh, the, the, the obstruction is because Biden cooperated with returning documents. Well, let me ask you all a simple question. Mm -hmm. If Biden cooperated and just, you know, turn the documents over, how come y'all keep finding documents? <laughs> That, that that excuse, that reasoning, it, it worked the first time. But after three more times, that don't work anymore. How yeah. come y'all keep finding documents if him and his team are just turning them over? And these are documents that go back to his time when he was in the Senate. 
Jesus. Like just everybody just knock off the hypocrisy. I just hope y'all can tell the difference between how liberal media covers you know uh, stuff on the other side. They how they cover Trump being caught with classified documents and how they cover Biden. The hypocrisy is disgusting. All right. Well, that is your front page news. Now, when we come back, Sherry Shepard will be joining us. Of course, she has the Sherry show that you can catch each and every day, depending on, you know, what market you're in it on different times. But you can check her out. And of course, stand up comedian. She's been on The View. So a host of others. But she's going to be joining us next. So don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. For all the stuff that I do is what Barbara Walters used to do. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't appreciate her until having my own mm. show. She would go to all of the affiliates. Every week I go visit affiliates. I hold babies. I kiss babies. Yep. I smile at, you know, I laugh at jokes that I, I go, okay, I guess you didn't told that joke 12 years mm -hmm. to everybody. I got to let you know. And so it's a lot of stuff that I'm doing. It's meetings nonstop. And I've not, I'm not used to that, mm -hmm. of being that part of because you get the glory and you also get it if it, if it don't go. So it's like going, get, rising up to that occasion. Right. Well, but it's good. Well, first of all, how are you? Because he's so rude. How, <laughs> how are you doing? I'm how a little you know, for Clint doing? right now because I'm so, I try to get it together because I ran into Angela. <laughs> Uh, sure and, and, and Tiffany Cross it is Angela's name <laughs> Angela Rye I'm, yes. I'm, I'm, oh my god I'm mm -hmm. so like embarrassed I can't even I like I'm, so I'm trying to get my groove back oh but man this is a woman like I am such a fan of Angela Rye I love <laughs> Tiffany Cross mm -hmm. they tell it like it is mm -hmm. like I'm like super fan and as soon as they walked <laughs> past me I walked out the door and I said to Angela oh, Rye hey April! <laughs> oh my gosh. Now, what April did you think she was? I just, in my head, I was just thinking about April, April Ryan. Ryan. Yeah. That's what I was thinking about, because April Ryan. Ryan. And, I and, got so, I and I got facial blindness anyway. I'm horrible with names. I have facial blindness, which is called prosopagnosia. So, like, when I look at your face, Envy, it's just a face. It's a nose, it's lips. I, there's no distinguishing well, features. Nose, I did not just get a nose job. <laughs> oh, you did, you did. I <laughs> Don't say that because she'll believe you. Exactly. you I sure will. That's no. how I'm going to remember Envy. Oh, Envy with the nose <laughs> job. Everyone, That's how. Why are you always doing that? Oh, you know Envy with the nose job? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I'm going to remember. I didn't get a nose job. I had polyps in my nose. They removed the polyps so I could breathe better and stop snoring. That's too That's too much to try to remember. To remember just to remember Envy. Right, Envy with the nose Envy job. Envy with the right. polyps in his nose. He had to get the polyps remember. Yeah. So Envy, like, it didn't even take too long. You're going to be gone by the time I say hi. That's right. Uh, so Envy with the nose so, job. Yes, yeah, right. so it works. Envy with the nose job. See how quick that is? Hey. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> see, 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 he doing that because he loves you so much. I doubt that. But <laughs> I, 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 I doubt that. Now, did you feel like uh, Wendy's shoes were too big to fill? Well, I think so. I think her. Sh I think she. We didn't even wear the same size <laughs> shoes. So I would have to say yes. <laughs> you an idiot, yo. <laughs> I think I'm answering that in a practical way. <laughs> yeah, I would say that. Yes. Oh man, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, were, you, were, you, were you were you afraid of that in any way? Afraid of the, the shoe no. size? No. no, I'm talking about literal. I'm not talking about we literal. Know. I'm talking we about know. figuratively. We know. <laughs> That's no. so crazy. Because I think you start getting afraid when you start comparing yourself to other people. Mm -hmm. And you can't, that's where you get into trouble. You can't compare yourself to other people. Otherwise, I would have been terrified when Star, when I had to take over Star Jones' mm, place on The View. Mm, and the one thing that mm. I loved is Star Jones called me. I was working on 30 Rock at the time. Uh, and she called me to congratulate me. And she says, don't try to fill my shoes because you will never fill my shoes. And she said, you have to go in with your own experience, your own eyes, and make these your memories. Mm -hmm. And she said, so I'm not going to tell you about who to watch out for. You have to go in mm -hmm. and get the lay of the land. And I appreciated that. So me doing what I do, I am a stand-up comic. I have a, I know what God called me to do. I have a faith. I, I'm, I'm really about a lot of positivity. So I knew that's what I do. If, mm -hmm. I, if I base my career off trying to compare myself to other people, I still be struggling. That's right. Gotcha. So, Did you speak to Wendy? Did you get a chance to talk to Wendy when that situation nah, went on? No, I, was, I didn't get a chance to talk to you. I didn't yeah. get a chance to talk to you, Charlemagne. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't get a chance to talk to my auntie Jaquizia. I No. So mm -hmm. there were certain people that I got a chance to talk to. It was Oprah Winfrey. Uh, Whoopi was in Italy, so I didn't get to talk to, to Whoopi. She called me back. It was Robin Roberts. Um... Ellen, I didn't get a chance. Nobody, you know, people don't be having celebrities' phone numbers or they won't give it to you. Mm -hmm. So I didn't get to talk to Ellen. So it was very few people 
that I got to talk to. Mm-hmm. I love the way you handled it, though. I guess, I mean, I, I think a statement came out when Wendy said she wasn't happy with it, or she wouldn't be watching the Sherry right. show or something. And I love the way you handled it. Just, you know, your response. I mean, I, uh, again, I, I'm not doing it for anybody. Mm-hmm. I know what my assignment is. So if somebody, and, and everybody has free choice. It's mm-hmm. like, if you want, if you want to watch me, watch and see what I can bring. If you don't, the beauty of it is there's Tamron Hall, mm-hmm. there's Jennifer Hudson. Wow. If you want a sister, there are we there are more than one there is more than one black woman. Did you ever always wanted a talk show? Was that something that yeah. was on your checklist like this is what I want? Yeah, I, yeah, it was just I didn't realize it was a talk show that I wanted when I was a little girl and was putting like a paper towel in front of every in front of my dolls. Mm-hmm. I just like to talk and I love knowing about people. But um, it started as I got as I was doing stand up. I was like, I'd like a, I'd like a talk show because I was looking at stand up comics who did talk shows and stand ups are really great at mm-hmm. doing talk shows. Absolutely. They're great at being guests on a talk show. And so I realized that's what I wanted. And my first pilot was in 2004 and it went nowhere. <laughs> I did it on the Regis and Kelly mm-hmm. set and it just went nowhere because I didn't know who I was. I just wanted to make people laugh. So if you told me to do anything, I would do it. Mm-hmm. But was that after the view or before? That was before know. the view. Okay, okay. That was way before the view. Wow, I, I did a view. That. I didn't start the view until 2007. Okay. And I was devastated because I'd done it on Regents and Kelly and I knew I was funny. And I, I remember the executives walked in and they was like, give us what you give on stage. That that thing you do. And I was like, what do I do? My voice was high. I was like, what do I do? Because I'll do it. Yeah. And they were like, you know, that thing. And I was like, I don't know. And I was like, Lord Jesus. And I was praying, but I wasn't ready. Right. I hadn't matured into the dream. And so had he given it to me, it would have fizzled so fast because I didn't know who I was. I'd have sat in front of people going, I, I, what am I supposed to say? Mm-hmm. Now, when I sit in front of a, an audience, I know exactly who I am. I know exactly what I'm delivering. Mm-hmm. I know exactly what my mission <clears throat> is. I know exactly when some people go, can I come on your show? No, that's not what I do. You you would be a, a celebrity came and he was like, I want to talk about something that happened in my life that's very serious. You probably would be better served with Tamron wow. sitting there because she's a journalist. Wow. So, so you tell people there. that. You tell I, I absolutely do. Wow. You would be better served over here because, you know, like I, the thing I love about Tamron is because she's a journalist, she's going to dig places that I'm not going to go. I'm going to ask you, when you do you know how to play spades? Because mm-hmm. I know my audience is coming. They want to feel good. They mm-hmm. want laughter. So I'm not going to go to those places so and i and i'm at that place where i can go no that doesn't work for me all right we got more with sherry shepherd when we come back don't move it's the breakfast club good morning still kicking it with sherry shepherd Charlemagne, have you taken a step back and like took a deep breath and just reflected on your journey like all of that like you know you talk about 2004 the show didn't go in the way when yeah you did that. and then you know the view and then and, you know you got let go from the view but then you know right. all these years later you know you get a chance to fill in now you, from the fill in to having your own show have you like like processed all that you know it's so funny Charlemagne, because I see now looking back sometimes God don't show you mm-hmm. how it's supposed to work out you just got to even going through it trust right. that it's all that scripture it, it, everything works together for your good mm-hmm. I did not realize that doing the view would be so instrumental in me understanding how to do my show mm. like i don't get caught up in social media and comments and because at the end of the day i still gotta pay jeffrey's uh therapist his school bill and i realize y'all not pay, uh, if y'all just want to talk about the fact i ain't got no damn hips and you ain't cute and you just stole this that's that doesn't serve me mm. and that's from being on the view because every time somebody got on me, I was going to Barbara and Bill Getty saying, can I just get on the air and clarify and apologize? And Barbara goes, for God's sake, if we apologize for everything, this show would be called The Apology. And it's not. If you want to apologize, <laughs> go somewhere else and do it. And that's why I learned, bitch, you better be tough. That's right. Everybody, you can't be letting everything affect you. So that was a learning ground doing Dish Nation. Uh, was a learning ground because I learned to, I'm in a studio by myself. So I have to learn to talk to that prompter like I'm looking at like I'm look right in the in the room with right. other people that serves me when I'm sitting on that chair because I can't see the audience the camera's right in front of me so yes now I see how all these, these little mm-hmm. things doing stand up mm-hmm. I have to stand on stage and headline for 90 minutes and keep you entertained and somebody might heckle damn your is big I gotta think something <laughs> Quick! I don't have Man, please thirty isolate minutes. Isolate that. Just isolate that. No, this is real. Like, Damn, you got some big ass. <laughs> okay, I'm talking about Jesus. being married oh, and divorced, yeah. but I gotta stop and I have to handle you. That serves me well sitting on a couch, mm-hmm. and it serves me well when I you people are wearing a mask. I can't see if you're laughing or not, mm-hmm. but I have to know that I know. 
walking out that door. Sherry, you funny. Mm -hmm. This is this is you've been prepared for this. So yes, now I see where got all these little things that I had to do. Even when I bombed, you know, and Dio Hughley told me get back on stage. You got to get back. So when I when things don't work, mm -hmm. segments that I want to try and they may not work, I go okay. Failure ain't no big deal. Let's get back up and try something. Do you else. remember your worst show as a comedian? And I, and I ask all comedians that. Do you remember <gasps> your worst show? Oh my gosh, it was uh, Mark Curry's manager. I don't remember his manager's name. Uh, he and Jamie had the same manager, some King Marcus King. They used to have a comedy show contest in Oakland, California. Mm -hmm. And me and my girlfriend, she's now a big publicist at ABC Freeform, because um, she didn't stay in the game. We pretty <laughs> much hitched a ride because this ain't for the week stand-up mm -hmm. comedy. Mm -hmm. We hitched a ride. Don't do this, girls, uh, if you hear me. But we hitched a ride all the way to Oakland, California, from, from L.A. Okay. From L.A. We hitched because we didn't have no money. We were struggling. And we went and did this contest because the Def Jam people were there. Stan Lathan, everybody was there watching these comments, the comics. And I had worked on my uh, act and the first round knocked out. The first freaking round because they put me last. I had to follow all the dirty comics and I was clean. I didn't even curse. Mm -hmm. Who else was on there? Do you remember? Oh my gosh, it was Lester Berry. It was D.L. Hughley. Did Jamie go up? Might have been Jamie because, yeah, it probably was Jamie because mm -hmm. he didn't have nothing in except pimples on his face. He didn't have Dang. nothing. <laughs> um, it was it was Yvette Brown. She used to play Endel on Moesha. Mm -hmm. she, and um, oh my gosh, Cat wasn't out then. We didn't know him. Uh, Might have been was JB there? I know Mark Curry was there. It's all the ones that you see now that mm -hmm. are, that, and then uh, there's a lot of them that you don't see. All of the mm -hmm. Oakland comics were there, and I they put me. It was 24 comics. I was 23. So me coming out going, hey everybody, how you doing? They was like, boo, bitch, get off the stage. Damn. It, and then all the comics when you bomb they don't want to be around you yeah. they don't even want to <laughs> talk to you it's like you got some kind of disease and I cried and I didn't have no money to get home and um, we had to hitch back and then I didn't it was just horrible mm. and my girlfriend made it the next round she made it the next round and she had to come and so she, I was like well you gonna come back she's like no I made it so I had to go back home mm. by myself so what made you continue on because at that point most people would have been like you know what maybe comedy's not for me it was all I had. It was like I was a legal secretary. My mom had diabetes and she was not taking care of herself. So she was sick. I had a sister that was on, you know, on drugs. Like my fa my fa my home was just my uh, ex-boyfriend. He had gone to prison. Like he was writing letters all the time telling me he was going to kill me. I mean, it was like. What the hell <laughs> kind of Lifetime movie was you living? Jesus. I really do need a Lifetime movie. And I want Tiana Taylor to play me. Um, but. No, no, I just, it was all I had mm -hmm. it, to, to be able to get on stage in the darkest times and half the time I didn't have a place to live, staying on people's couches. That was the only time I felt like somebody or, you know, just being on stage knowing I could make people laugh at the stuff that I was going through. So I, I got the journal from when I was on stage. It has tears dried up on the, mm -hmm. on the, um, the, the notebook. So that's why I got on stage. I, I got a two part question because it's, it's, it's about both of your careers. When you did yeah. stand up in that moment and you said you was number 24 and everybody before you was dirty, that was an era where you had to be like shocking, right? Like you had yeah. to have like mm -hmm. some edge to you just exactly. to even stand out. How did you keep yourself from being that? Because I couldn't be that. Okay. Like, I, like if you, Cheryl Underwood was on there. Oh, Lord, and if you've ever gracious. seen Cheryl yeah, on yeah, stage, yeah. like Cheryl, it turned out she's still uh, Joe Torrey. Joe oh, Torrey was on the thing. Mm -hmm. You following Joe Torrey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh! So uh, was TK doing it? I'm oh, not sure. Lord. Do you you following T to the fucking K? K? <laughs> <laughs> Those are, and, then, and then I'm from the Valley, mm -hmm. so I'm talking like this. My voice is so high. How you guys doing? Um, I couldn't be. I tried to go up on stage one time at the Birdland West in Long Beach, and I tried. Scruncho was up at the. Now more names are coming to me, but um, I tried to be Cheryl. But it's not authentic. Mm -hmm. And I remember going up on stage and I tried to do, I had this heckler line prepared. If they said something, I was going to be like, I'll stab you. I'll stab. And I, and I tried and they was laughing. Because it, <laughs> it, it don't hardly look, sure look like she could stab you. Yeah. Sherry Shepard? No, sir. So it, it didn't work, me trying to be somebody who I wasn't. And I, I learned to... Uh, just you know DL said you got to get back up on the stage mm -hmm. Jamie was very encouraging Yvette everybody and I just realized it's just you you got to keep getting back up you got to keep showing up and you eventually get better if you keep doing it you get better so you have to you got to bomb you got to right. fail otherwise you really don't appreciate it when you get on stage now I can get on stage it don't you know a heckler you're not scaring me because mm -hmm. you're not making the money I'm making 
you probably want to do what I'm doing right now, but you're scared. So you're going to scream it on stage where it's dark. But if I put a microphone in front of your face, you ain't really got too much to say. And everybody in this room came to see me and they really want you gone. So when I come in and I got their confidence. They know. And what was the big part? Do do? So the, the second part of that is, I guess you applied that to the view as well, because Barbara Walters is the bar. I right? was a mess during the view. Really? I wasn't confident at all. Okay, because Barbara, like Barbara, was ratchet. You know what I mean? I uh -huh. loved, it. I loved yeah. every the way she used she to ask play. questions. Did you feel like you had to be that? When you was on The View? Yeah, I okay. felt like I had to, like, I, I got on this show, Charlamagne, and Eddie Murphy was the one that told me, I was doing a show, I was doing a movie called Who's Your Caddy with Big oh, Boy. Yeah, I'm talking in yeah, tongues yeah, yeah. with Terry Crews. I'm just trying to make people laugh, and they called me to guest host, and I guest hosted, and they liked me, uh, and then Star was like, when I, go on the, when I go on the road, I want Sherry to fill in for me. I was terrified to meet Star. I probably called her by the wrong name. Um, What's up, Stacy? <laughs> Stacy, because she was a big lawyer, and then Joy said, I like Sherry. When I go on the road and do gigs, call, so they kept calling me, mm -hmm. but I never wanted to do that show, because I knew they were talking about politics and debating. I, I was a Jehovah's Witness. I didn't do no debating. I didn't talk back to people who were older than me, and um, everybody kept saying, do it, because it's going to change your life. Mm -hmm. My best friend, John Murray, mm -hmm. who was my EP on my show, he said, Sherry, doing The View will change your life. It j and I promise you, and I did it reluctantly. And here the first week, I said, I don't know if the earth was round or flat. Step right in Lord it. Have the mercy. And I did, and by the way, <laughs> I do know that the earth is round. I was so nervous. When I get nervous, I can't remember names. I get, you know, I didn't even hear them ask me the question. You was ahead of your time. It's more flat earthers now than it seems like you was <laughs> now, now they all coming about yeah. the woodworks. Everybody who said the earth is flat. Um, but when Bar and then to sit next to this woman who's just like, she don't smile. She don't, mm. you know, then I'm next to Whoopi who's looking at me like, bitch, you don't know nothing. You know, I'm just like, so it was very, it was very hard for me. All right, well, don't move. We got more with Sherry Shepard when we come back. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. We are the Breakfast. This club. We're still kicking it with Sherry Shepard. Charlamagne. How did you find yourself on that show? Because you, you know, Barbara would ask anything, right? Yeah. And Whoopi is already established, and you know. And that was the year we started doing a lot of politics, because mm -hmm. that's the year Obama was running, and it was a lot of race stuff coming mm -hmm. up, and I, I had to mm -hmm. learn. It was a lot of failures. On it was a lot of falls. I don't like calling failures. It was a lot of falls mm -hmm. on the view, and I, you know, I had to sit and look at Bill Maher saying they could do something with the stupid stick. To me, Bill O'Reilly called me a pinhead. You gave me donkey of the day. Like this was everything. What Howard you gave me Stern. Day for, you remember? Probably the flat Earth thing. I don't remember. I don't remember what you gave it. No, you said I don't have no butt or something. It was the Tasmanian devil. I, I was remember a different you said, person back then. Sherry. See, I, I know, that. but now you're now, <laughs> you've evolved. now you you've evolved. Now you have therapy in your life, That's and you true. you yeah. you have the Jesus. God that we all serve. You're respectful. You love people's energy. I do. You do. They're like now you're you're changed. You've evolved. Jesus. You you wasn't all that when you gave me donkey of the day and talked about. And I was listening to you. I was like, dead. You know? Oh, I remember that because you said your son used to listen to the show. Yeah, me and my son listened yes. to the show. He's like, Mommy, why Charlamagne don't like you? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> no, I didn't say I didn't like you, like you now. Well, when you give somebody donkey to date Charlamagne, That's just a moment. when you're on the other side of that, asked Stephen A. Smith, when you're on the other side of that, <laughs> people, you, be thinking people don't, you think people don't like you. But it is all of that. I had to, that's how I learned Sherry. You can't take in everybody else's energy. Yeah, that, yeah. that doesn't serve mm -hmm. you. I, I know that. So I don't pay attention to social media. I wish I could let these young people know. Get beyond social media and clapping back and you arguing with this one. You, it, it don't serve mm -hmm. you. It is a waste of energy. But I didn't know that then. But I learned. Mm -hmm. I learned from a woman going, this ain't the damn apology show. That's Go out there, right. stand by what you said, and we're going to keep it moving. Because basically, once the next news cycle comes they're gonna forget what you said no that's i want to ask you about that because that's a good yeah. point right but like, thank you for coming too but after he gave you donkey sure, you you thank you for no, coming sure. in. Was on the intro to the show i, know, but I'm saying, thank you for coming <laughs> we talked i forgot you no, gave no, a donkey actually you apologized you was like yeah. no you not and you said you were sorry so the that's evolution right. i could see it happening even there now you mentioned stephen a smith he was on your show <laughs> last week you oh he his, stepped in you ruined his book release week Oh my gosh! I was trying to let him know on the couch. He was Come on, he had a Steven. conversation about Super Bowl. Oh my gosh! And then he went 
jumped out the window and just said out of nowhere for no reason Rihanna is no oh my god I say why you know but the thing about it is like I feel like Stephen A a lot of people I had this thing that's what he does that's what he gets paid for but there's a way that men be talking you know y'all talk you can get brutal mm-hmm. but when you go in front of a, a, a audience full of black women mm-hmm. It's a day and time we tired of being compared to the next black woman. Mm-hmm. We t- black women are feeling like don't nobody protect us. Like you, it's a lot of triggers, and you and I feel like somebody on his team should have been briefing him. Going, this is a female talk show, Stephen A. This ain't because on his show, I'm sure they tell the women if y'all want to play on our field, you got to take you you got to be able to play like a man. Mm-hmm. But I wish somebody would have said you coming on an all female show. They love Sherry. These are women. So there's a you got to you got to co- course correct a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't think so. And I think it threw him, you know, because he even got he, he got that swag. He sat back and did his tie. And I was like, oh, you in trouble. And you you coming on with the swag because they was loving Steven. They were loving him. And he he did everything that he did. He does it on his show. Mm-hmm. But she ain't no Beyonce. Mm. Let it sit. He does that. That crowd like, was not feeling that. That crowd was mm-hmm. not. And he wasn't reading the room. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know, <laughs> I'm going to give her this. And I'm going to give her that. You know, and, and I'm looking at him going, I just wanted to use the N-word right on the air going, boy, you are you are stepping in it. And this ain't going, and it ain't going to lie on just my show. You may think be thinking it's the little Sherry show. This sucker about to get out. I tried. I was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We trying to, he wasn't going with me. And I, I said, see you try. Like, no, we're not comparing. You know, <laughs> totally two different that shows. Was the there was no comparison. Like, what was the point? Like, it wasn't even a discussion. I think you know because I, you, this is what Steven does. Mm-hmm. He just he, you know he he causes he does controversy and he he it's in his DNA to go yeah but and this is how people talk. We've That's had this true. you know when you with your friends you talk who's better. Mm-hmm. I loved it when Katy Perry came on and Missy Elliott stole it. You know mm-hmm. we have those discussions, but you got to know how to read your room. Mm-hmm. Well, Katy and Missy is different because we. Yes, we want. Yeah, like I'm not paying no attention to Katie. Yeah, I want Missy. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying the feeling I got when Missy exploded on that stage yeah. mm-hmm. is why I watch set through Katy Perry's right. uh, set. It was Missy Elliott. So there's a way that you talk. There's things that I will not say on my show that I because I know that's not my audience, and I learned that from the View. John had to comment. It was one time I was defending Sarah Palin with everything I had. I was up because she had a special needs child. Mm. So I was like, this is a woman with a special needs child. And John was like, uh, black people hate you. Stop it. It's certain things. There's your inside voice. There's your... So I will never be that person who says everything that's on my mind. But why can't we have nuance? Though? I, I understand what John's saying, but you should be able to say, hey, I can uh, relate because she has a special needs child, but also I don't. I may not like her politics. Why? Because I wasn't no articulate like that at that time. Oh, I am now. Yeah, like you, because we had a whole discussion backstage of uh, because I do feel like I don't like that so many people jumped on Stephen because it was an opinion. He loves both women. He really does love both women. He just he just felt you you gotta you gotta come up to where Beyonce is. Riri Re, knows that she she got that competition within herself. Um, he just didn't read the room. And I felt I came in and I said, I want to say this was unfair to Stephen A. Smith. He should have been blah, 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 blah. And John said, you have to you have to do. Are you falling on the sword with Stephen? Because mm-hmm. this is what you, you're going to get the backlash. Mm-hmm. There's a way you can articulate this, Sherry, because we got to remember the, the theme of the show is you're being funny. You're light. So you can't come on, you know, wagging your finger at people. Because yeah. what I don't like is that nobody is allowed to have an opinion That's right. and say anything without people going, take him off the air and canceling. So we we worked it through. It took us about 25 minutes. We worked it through of, okay, well, I could put a joke in here. I could do, okay, it's the Beehive in the Navy. You know, I could say this and I could, so that it's palatable. Mm-hmm. For everybody, and I still said the same thing, and I still put in my message of I don't like us being at a place where we can't say our opinion. So that's what I I know how to do that now. Well, they apologized back, in the parking lot, right? Because he, he apologized in the car. Cause <laughs> I think it was just shell shock too. Yeah. You know, because you you know you don't, and also you just don't realize how big this the people in today we get triggered, and that affects your. And that's why I said please go buy his book. Because he does say some really great things in his book mm-hmm. about yeah, you know about his, his, his relationship with yeah. his father, his mother, mm-hmm. how instrument. And I still have women going, I don't give because the sisters didn't teach him nothing, and his mama didn't. I mean, I have Jesus. friends who are really angry. Mm-hmm. And he didn't say what, right? If you say 
If y'all having a discussion about live performers and you say Rihanna's right. not a better live performer than Beyonce. But yeah. all you said was Rihanna ain't no Beyonce. What does that even mean? I think it's just him sitting. You know, you know your you know your uncle at the at Thanksgiving. No matter what you say, your uncle like yeah. But you know he That's ain't right. gonna have the way he run. And I think and also I think that Stephen A. Smith didn't realize we black women we are just feeling like we're not protected. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's not like you have to with with on first take. You are brutally taking down thirty NFL teams. You got a lot of comparison. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. black women at this at this level performing at the Super mm -hmm. Bowl mm -hmm. is. Three of them. Mm -hmm. One got in trouble. Her nipple got shown. Mm -hmm. She got thrown under mm -hmm. the bus, and and her career was gone for a minute. Janet Jackson. You got Beyonce. You got Rihanna. You just have like it's not a lot. We there's not no, a I lot of sense. us. So to be trying to, it does look like you're pitting us against, and that's why I think you have to have women on your team sometimes to go. Let me come in here and tell you something. So I don't Black think that women. went through. Black women. Black women. You, it was it was yeah. Black women when they and they turned quick. Oh my gosh. And then you also, you got the behalf. It's a bunch of 14 year olds right. coming after you. <laughs> now you arguing you with 14 year olds. Right. And, and you don't realize the power of 14 year olds yeah. putting memes all on. You can't even get to the good comments because oh, them 14 Lord. year olds ain't got nothing to do. I don't argue with the behalf. I don't even say these. The Nikki, Riri, Beyonce, Nikki's Lil' is the, Kim. Nikki's, Nikki's is, is the worst. Nikki's is different. The bobs? I said, when Ooh, I tell you, the you don't bars, want no smoke with the bobs. They said to me when I did, when I was filling in, and I think I said one thing. It wasn't even nothing bad. And somebody uh, put on a post. They said, don't even go there because we'll take you down. It was like the mafia had spoken to me. I showed John. I was like, they, co they coming. And, and, and I was like, oh, my gosh. This egg on these barbs. Well, check out the Sherry Show each <laughs> and every day. We yeah, appreciate you for doing everything. So Two much. seasons, the NAACP Absolutely. Image Award no mm -hmm. We're nominated for NAACP uh, Image Award for Sherry and one for my podcast, Two Funny Mamas with Kim Willie. It's our second nomination. We won last year. So it's our second nomination. I, I got, I want an Emmy written down on my mirror everywhere, but I want this. So go vote at NAACP Image mm -hmm. uh, Awards.net. Please. It's All a right. little hard. Y'all got to do the work to get to where we That's are. Right. But go on to the work, please. Let's get Sherry more accolades so she can get even more money, even though she's already a millionaire. Because we got to get oh, her off this train. Oh, you in my wallet now. Yeah, so you got to give a shout out to my two ex-husbands. <laughs> and all the money I got to... Oh, yeah. You still paying child Yes. No. Yes. I sure am. Jesus. When is that up? Jeffrey's still 17. Oh, 17. And yeah, uh, yes, I'm, yes. Are you counting down the days? I am counting down the days. Jeez. So, yes. Yeah, so don't... That, you stop, get off my wallet. That's going to be up. I got should, stuff to do. I got should do a IRS party bills. on the show. Yeah, we should. <laughs> now, I don't want to poke a sleeping bear. <laughs> They've been leaving me alone. They've been leaving me alone. Right. Well, it's Sherry Shepard. It's the Breakfast Club. Thank you for joining us so much. <laughs> Thank y'all for having me. I ain't having those, y'all. We got those, guys. We definitely got those, guys. I'm going to tell you. It's the I know it's the polyps. It's the polyps. You had the polyps. The polyps. And the poly you did the polyps and you had to clear the polyps out. You see how long that takes. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> it's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get to the rumors. Let's talk Beyonce. Rumor has it. Rumor, rumor has it. Call out a name or you gossiping or you chatty patty. I am gossiping. This is the rumor report. I mean, I guess we on the Breakfast Club. This is where the tea spills, right? Yes. Right. On the Breakfast Club. Now, Beyonce, when you talk about great, when you talk about a performer, when you talk about an artist that gets busy, Jesus Christ. Now, Beyonce hasn't performed in four years, but she performed during the grand reveal of Atlantis the Royale, which is a new luxury resort in Dubai. Uh, so many people were there. Um, of course, Jay-Z, Chloe Halley. I see Kendall Jenner. I Who see Chloe uh, Halley? What did I say? Chloe Halley. Chloe That's and what Halley. What did I say? You said it like it's one person. Chloe, Chloe and Halley. And Halley. That's what I said. Uh, Nia Long, Terrence J was there. Uh, Beyonce performed and she killed it. Beautiful performance. Man, you, you, she was accompanied by. The, what? You still didn't get to the good part. What? What's the good part? Tell them how much she got paid. I'm about to. For one uh, hour. She, she was accompanied by a 48 person all female orchestra. She also had a, a Lebanese dance troupe. She got paid $24 million for a one hour performance. Oh, that mercy. You should have led with that. All that other stuff I could care less about. And this was her singing. For one hour.
because when she started singing that part, she stood on a riser. Huh? Because people was drinking? No, she stood on a riser. It's like a riser that looked like it was maybe five by five by five. They locked it in and the riser went up in the air maybe about 60, 70, 80 feet up in the air. And she was singing as the fireworks were going and the water show was going. And she was just clicked onto this one little thing and she was blowing. It, it looked amazing. She was singing her ass off. I wonder did she get paid all twenty four million up front, or did they do half and then half when she got there? What do you think? And did, did that is that all in, or did that include travel and everything else? Now I'm sure that's all in twenty four million all in. She has to take care of her set and everything. I'm sure she didn't pocket the whole thing. She had to pay for transportation, uh, her set because her set was amazing. It wasn't like it you was think just she paid for a set. No way. You don't think that's part of the twenty four million? I'm going to give you $24 no. million and I got to pay for your set? Nah, With yes, the fireworks and, and the water and all that? I, think, I don't think that's all in, bro. I think that's $24 million for your pocket. I think they pay for the set and everything else, and they pay for travel. And they probably gave her a, a, a block of rooms to give away for free to people. Nah. $24 million plus that's, that means that's, the, that's $30 million in. Because yeah, that set was about you know $2, what? $3 million. You know what? Let's act our wage. Let's yeah, stop right. mining. Let's stop mining rich people business. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Well, congratulations to Beyonce. She killed it. She absolutely positively destroyed it. So shout to her. Now they asked people who are going to put their phones away. Obviously, nobody put their phones away because there was so much footage and videos uh, circulating in, on the internet. So, which was great for us because we got to see Beyonce perform. Now, Shine seems like he's doing a deal with Walt Disney, Rock Nation, and DJ Khaled about his life. I am very pleased, very grateful that I was able to uh, close a deal with uh, Walt Disney and their subsidiaries, uh, ESPN and Anscape, to produce my bio documentary, bio motion picture, and bio TV series, as well as my memoir. Uh, and that will, um, the documentary will be executive produced by DJ Khaled and Rock Nation. Stay tuned. Uh, we will begin production here in Belize uh, in the spring. And uh, we look uh, for a 24, 2024 uh, summer release. I okay. Well, that's amazing. Well, Disney, must, uh, Disney must be doing more edgier content now. Because that don't sound like, his story don't sound like a Walt Disney story to me. No, well, he is the prime minister of Belize, but for people that don't know, of course, he was out the night when Diddy and uh, Jennifer Lopez was in that uh, club and gunshots mm -hmm. were fired and three people were injured and they believe Shine was one of the shooters. He was uh, arrested for it. He had to do jail time and then he was deported to Belize. He changed his life around and now he is the prime minister of Belize. Oh, yeah. It's an amazing story of growth and evolution. Uh, one of the, the, the best stories of growth and evolution in hip hop. I just don't see... Uh, Disney doing that. Yeah, Disney's, is, wow. Disney's Disney, usually, right? you know, that's the home of Mickey Mouse. Right. <laughs> you know, they they try to hold, they try to act, put out that PG content. Right. And lastly, just quickly, it says TikTok confirms that its own employees can decide what goes viral. They're saying that the U.S. employees have the ability to boost videos in order to introduce celebrities and emerging creators to the TikTok community. So uh, it's almost like having a heating button where they can, you know, whatever's hot or dope, they can make hot or dope. I didn't know that. So come does that on, mean the employees Danny. can decide? No, nah, I didn't. You come on. You had to know that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that. There, I'm not saying that there's, there's plenty of content that organically, you know, takes off on all of these platforms. But yes, there's people at these platforms that help push a lot of this content through. Come on, it's just like radio, bro. Like we, so we know it, radio. You know, we, it's just like radio and TV programming. You know this. Come on. So it's paid. So like, if you have an artist, you can pay somebody at TikTok to make your thing go viral. I, we've been hearing about this. We've been hearing about people doing these campaigns on these social media platforms, whether it's the TikToks or the, uh, who else did we hear that on? YouTube. We've been hearing about this kind of stuff. Why are we acting like this? It's not a surprise. No. Oh. All right. Well, that is your rumor report. Now, who are you giving that donkey to? Man, four after the hour, man. Let's talk about people who don't want to uh, hold themselves accountable. There's a young woman named Daniela Lease. She needs to come to the front of the congregation. we like to have a word with her. All right, we'll get to that next. Don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Looking to turn a small bet into a big payday? With DraftKings Sportsbook Same Game Parlays, you can pocket more cash when you can buy multiple bets from one game. Download the app, sign up with code ENVY. That's E-N-V-Y. 
and get a special offer. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. It's time for Donkey of the Day. Donkey of the Day asks y'all the I'm a Democrat, so being Donkey of the Day is a little bit of a mixed question. So like a donkey. Yeehaw. Okay. Donkey of the Day. <laughs> the Breakfast Club, bitches. Now, I've been called a lot in my 23 years, but Donkey of the Day is a new one. Uh, donkey of the day for Monday, January 23rd goes to Daniela Lees. Uh, she's 26 years old, and she's a Canadian woman who in 2019 was convicted of impaired driving that led to a massive explosion in London. Y'all might have forgot or uh, never heard of Daniela, uh, but it, she pled guilty to four counts of impaired driving, and she was sentenced to three years in prison in 2021. Can I refresh your memory? Let's go to CTV News for the report, please. 22-year-old Daniela Lees faces a dozen charges connected to the blast that rocked the old East Village mid-August. Lees faces charges including impaired operation over 80 milligrams causing bodily harm and four counts of criminal negligence causing bodily harm. On August 14th, emergency crews responded to the Woodman Avenue address for a collision. Once on scene, responders noticed the smell of gas and within minutes the house exploded. Police believe the vehicle hit a gas line when it collided with the home. Now, roughly 100 homes had to be evacuated and seven people were injured, including multiple first responders. Jesus Christ. Uh, well, you know, we live in a world where nobody holds themselves accountable for nothing. OK, nothing is never the fault of the person. All right. Blame always has to go to someone else. So Daniela is blaming someone else for this. Uh, she's actually filing a lawsuit against Ovations Ontario Food Services, alleging that the company shares some of the liability for civil lawsuits filed by the victims of the blast because <laughs> they served her alcohol. Yeah, she's blaming it on the alcohol. I can't make this kind of stuff up. Let's go to CTV News for the report, please. The Kitchener woman behind the wheel in an impaired driving crash that destroyed and damaged several homes in London is suing the company that served her at Budweiser Gardens that night. Daniela Lees is facing a number of civil lawsuits in relation to the August 2019 crash and says Ovation's Ontario Food Services should share liability. Now, CTV's Krista Simpson is joining us now with more on this story. Krista, uh, before the crash, Lees was at a concert. Ricardo, the statement of claim says, among other things, the company served her alcohol, didn't monitor how much she was drinking, let her drink more than she should have, and ejected her from the venue without making sure she was not going to drive impaired. In October 2020, Lees pleaded guilty to four counts of impaired driving causing bodily harm, ultimately being sent sentenced to three years in prison. Lee's lawsuit against Ovation's Ontario Food Services says the crash would not have happened if the company had not been negligent. You know, I came up in an era when drinking and driving was a choice. Okay, you can drink or you can drive. You can drive or you can drink, but you cannot do both. Okay, we had so many reminders not to drink and drive. You know, uh, South Carolina had the highways, the dieways commercials. I don't know if they were national. I think they might have been national. Uh, Virginia had to drive sober or get pulled over. Those might have been national too. I don't remember. But rem remember the buzz driving is drunk driving campaigns. Mm -hmm. I know Texas, Texas had the faces of drunk driving ads. I mean, don't drink and drive was literally drilled into our brains since day one. Okay, not to mention this happened in 2019. All right, the ride share revolution has been happening for a long time. Okay, the Lyfts, the Ubers of the world. There was somebody you could have called Daniela. Now, don't get me wrong. We know that some bars can be held liable when they know a person is intoxicated and they keep serving them. I don't know if this is one of those situations. Okay, the lawsuit is saying that uh, they knew she was intoxicated and did not train or supervise staff serving alcohol and put profit above safety. I don't know if all that is true. I don't know if all that is proven. Uh, all I know is that in the drunk driving case, the primary defendant is the drunk driver. Okay, we live in a society where nobody wants to be held accountable for their actions. It's always somebody else's fault. She's better off saying the devil made me do it. Okay, if you're going to blame somebody, blame Satan, Lucifer, Beelzebub, Trump, whatever you call the devil. She might as well have put the blame on that evil entity because all that is more believable and makes more sense. But at the end of the day, 
We are all accountable for ourselves. Simple as that. Accountability breeds responsibility. So whenever you see someone doing something as irresponsible as Daniela did, it's because she's probably a human who has never been held accountable for anything she's ever done in her life. Okay, that three years in prison she's serving right now is the first time she's probably ever been held accountable for her actions. And of course, she doesn't want to take full responsibility. Well, kids, always remember, 99% of all failures come from people who have a habit of making excuses. Safe to say Daniela falls under that 99%. Please let Remy Ma give Daniela Lease the biggest hee-haw. Hee-haw, hee-haw, you stupid mother are you? Dumb. All right. Well, thank you for the donkey of the day. Now, let's talk about you, Envy. What? What you mean? How you feeling this morning? You know, uh, you, you're, you're, you're in colonoscopy, colonoscopy prep right now? Yes. Yes, uh, I am. Um, well, if you don't know, I'm, I'm getting my colonoscopy today. Now, that's where they, I, I guess, stick a camera up your butt and look for polyps or anything that shouldn't be there and if they do find something cut it out take it out to make sure that you are okay uh they usually make you do it uh, at age 40 and older if you have uh well, history in your family or 45 if you don't 45 and older it used to be it used to be 50 that do it, but the age uh came down to 45 but if you have it's a 40, history it's 40 in some places it's 40 uh some doctors do 40 if you have history yeah, if you have a history of it, that's why I was able to get it early because I'm I'm 44, but I was able to get it early because uh, I have a I have a history of it in my family. I went and got mine over the holidays, and I told you that the prep was going to be the hardest part. Have you have you felt that thus far? Yes, uh, yes, I have. So uh, for for people that don't know, this is Uncle Talk, Uncle talking right now, uh, and and this is if you have a dad or uncle or anybody in your life. People are usually scared to do this And they're scared to do it Because one They don't want people Probing around their butt And two A lot of people <laughs> And two People are scared to Sometimes to hear the results But we have to get it done earlier Because if it's done early They can treat it And they could uh, Make sure that You know They can cut all cancerous Polyps or anything like that out So The prep is I like this hmm? uh, No I'll go say I promise you To everybody listening the prep is the worst part. And Envy's going to realize this after he gets somebody in his butt today. Because you're not even going to remember nobody being in your butt. They're going to hit you with that IV. And they're going to tell you you're going to be out within seconds. And you're not going to believe them. And they're going to tell you when you wake up, it's going to be all over. And it's really going to be all over. Yeah. So the prep is pretty much this. I'll break it down fast. For, for three days, you can't eat anything solid. So you can't eat no meat, no salad, nothing like that. Uh, you have to kind of keep it easy. The day before, you have to take these pills. It's 12 pills. They feel like horse pills, big as hell. You got to swallow it with 16 ounces of water. And then for the next four hours, you on that toilet. I mean, you are pooping. The first couple of poops. Oh, no, it's bad. Hey, the first couple of poops is everything that's inside of you. But after that, you just pooping water. I mean, water. straight water, water fountain. It don't even feel like diarrhea. It just feel like straight up and down. It feels like a colonic. Water. If you've ever, just, if you've ever, if you've ever had a colonic, it feels like a colonic. Like when that colonic is over and you go sit on that toilet and it's just number water coming out. That's what uh, you know it is. But you know, here's the thing. You you got a lot of concerns. Like I've heard you 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 want you 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 care about who the doctor is. You don't know who the doctor is. No, I know who the doctor is. What do you mean I care oh. about the doctor? No, because uh, Taylor came in and was talking about, do you prefer a male doctor or a woman doctor? It don't matter when you're trying to live. That's what she was saying. And I was saying I prefer a male doctor. I have a male doctor. And the reason I have a male doctor is not because I want a male doctor all up in my butt. But when it comes to uh, Why talking you to a doctor. say that? No, because when you have a male doctor, I prefer, this is just me, I prefer a doctor that has the same parts as me that I can explain things to. So if something hurts in my body, in my butt that I have, or in my testicles, or my whatever, Bruh. I can say, hey, it feels like this. Bruh. That's why I have a male doctor. That's me. Y'all know, know women get colonoscopies too, right? Yeah, but women don't have testicles. Well, what does the testicles have to that. do with anything? I'm, I'm just talking about the doctor that I have. That's it. I man, just want to mail. Up, man. Anyway, back to colonoscopy. What is the question? What is the question? What are we talking about? Well, Why are I'm we talking about this? Because people have a lot of concerns. You know what I'm saying? People that are, are going through this have a lot of concerns. And I want to encourage, you know, men to go out there and get colonoscopy. So I'm telling them that the, the prep is the worst part. Right. right. Some people are concerned about who the doctor is. That's just silly to me. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, you're afraid they're going to find polyps, you know, mm -hmm. or even worse, cancer. So we're hoping for that. And I told you, you might wake up with an erection. Now that it concerns me a lot. I woke up with an erection. All right. Big, now, big stiffy, too. So a male doctor was playing in your butt and then you woke up with an erection. 
whatever. I'm just telling you that it happened. What's you know the what question? I'm, so, I'm not. It's I mean, not look, a question. We, I want people to call in this morning and give you uh, words of encouragement. You know what I'm saying? We're going to call this the colonoscopy prep hotline. Okay? And I want people to call in and give you words of encouragement and talk about, you know, their experiences, what did they experience, uh, you know, during their prep for a colonoscopy and after the colonoscopy was done. You know, we want to we want to alleviate some of your fears. All right. 800-585-1051. And I have a question, right? When you woke up and your penis was erect and you and the doctor were staring at the eye in, in each other's eyes, what was the first thing he said or you said to him? Man, I wasn't even thinking about that. I just was looking down. I was I was very aware that I had a stiffy, though. And I was like, damn, why can't it look like this more often? Did you look at him and say, I love you? Like, how Like how did that? Anyway, 800-585-1051. I was myself impressed, actually. Like, the whole <laughs> talk- seven inches, the whole seven inches, three-fourths was out. Stop, I was stop like, man, it. can I take some of this medicine home? We're talking colonoscopies when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's topic time. Call 800-585-1051 to join into the discussion with The Breakfast Club. Let's talk about it. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now, if you're just joining us, uh, we're talking about uh, colonoscopies. And the reason is because I got to go get mine today. All right, now. You got to uh, go get yours today. I got mine over right. the holidays, man. So if you don't know, is what they do is they pretty much uh, stick a camera up your butt and make sure that uh, you don't have any polyps or any cancerous things in your butt that can cause cancer and, you know, could kill you. So just Or redness. So like Chadwick Boseman, of course, rest in peace, he died from colon cancer. Uh, Sharon Osbourne had colon cancer. Uh, Katie Couric had colon Uh, cancer. Our good Uh, brother, uh, our good brother, Combat Jack. Combat Jack. That's why when you look at that mural, that mural that, uh, you know, Justin Richburg did for us. In our Breakfast Club studios, you know, you look at that mirror, look at that. Like Chadwick Bozeman is on there, uh, Combat Jack is on there, mm-hmm. you know. So these are people that you know, we've, we've, we've just sat down with in the past, you know, six to seven years, and they're no longer here with us. They're no longer here with us. Yeah, baseball great Daryl Strawberry, he had colon cancer. So the reason I'm doing it is because, you know, we can always set up our families, right? Make sure they're good financially. But those finances mean nothing if you can't be there with them. You and for that, right. we have to go to the doctor. We have to make sure that we're okay. We have to make sure that we're checked with everything going on in this world. We should make sure that we're okay. So a lot, of, I know a lot of people are scared because they don't want a doctor all in their butt. I know a lot of people are scared because they're scared of the results. I know a lot of people are scared because they might not have health insurance. But there's so many different ways that you can get this checked. So please call a doctor and check it out. Let me tell you something. Y'all taking this pause thing way too far. If you're worried about a doctor being in your butt. To keep you alive for another 20, 30 years. Do you know what I'm saying? If you if you if you that afraid, you know, of, of somebody just doing their job as a doctor, and that's the way that they gotta get inside of you to do their job, but they're possibly preventing you and keeping you alive, they're preventing you from getting cancer and keeping you alive, and you worried about somebody being in your butt? Come on, man. Not yeah, on. so I have the procedure today. Now the procedure, the prep is everything. So the prep is you take, I have to take 12 pills. There's many different ways of prep but the way i'm doing is i have to take 12 pills these are like big ass horse pills you have to take with 16 ounces of water and after 30 minutes you on that toilet for about three four hours um i have to take it this morning at 9 30 a.m so if you're looking for me this morning at 9 30 a.m i'm going to be on the toilet so if i'm talking to you i'm going to be on the toilet talking to you and it stinks uh but it's water of course it stinks it's doo-doo <laughs> what are you talking water about? You poop out water, like just water, like water, just water, 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 to the point where your butt is going to get raw because you got to wipe your butt all the time and your butt gets raw. Just tell exactly. You the truth. Exactly. Just tell and you listen, truth. man, I told you the prep is going to be the worst part. And you're Correct. experiencing that now. Some people are concerned about who the doctor is. Uh, you know, we pray that they don't find any polyps or, or even Correct. worse, any cancer, you know. Correct. And I told you that you might wake up with an erection. That's what I'm that's what I'm looking forward to hear. What? So Charlemagne woke up with an erection. Male doctor was in Charlemagne's butt. He woke up with an erection. And him and the doctor, after looking at each other eye to eye, that's what he did. That's right. I didn't say we I were don't know that's eye. Happening. Shut up. I ain't saying nobody <laughs> no looking eye to eye. All I said was that <laughs> I woke up with an erection. So you tried to slip that in there. Pause. I hope somebody slipped something in you. Now, huh? see what if I wish that on you? Goodness what if gracious. I wish somebody slipped something in you? Huh? Goodness gracious. Let's go to the phone lines, man. Hello, who's this? Good morning. I rather stay anonymous. Oh boy, why? No, I just, I, just because, no, I want to let you know, like, it's really easy. Like, you already passed the, the hard part 
uh, if you're getting it done today. But you had it easy because I had to drink like jugs of this liquid that was disgusting, and you only got pills. Yeah, you, you know what? That's that's crazy. The jugs. All I had to do was pills too. But I think women might have to do the jug because I, I was speaking to a, a couple of women that had to do it, and they had to take the liquid. But all of all the men that I know, they took the pill. Yeah, it's disgusting. But I promise you, like before, they tell you you about to be out, you out, and you wondering when is it going to start, and it's over. Wow, it's, it's, it's that fast. Not but for see, real. I, wasn't, the... I had to... Go ahead. No, I said when the doctor tells you that when you wake up, it's over. It's really just that it's fast. Over. It's really that fast. I couldn't believe that it was done. But I didn't have no medical issues besides being told, like, honestly, physically, you are full of shit. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Now, let me ask you a question, Mama. This is going to sound a little left, right? I asked Charlemagne yeah. this the other day, and Charlemagne didn't, you know, answer me. Now, do you manscape? Should I manscape before I go in or just, just hairy ass it all out? Uh, I, would, I would clean it up down here. Clean it up, all right. Clean it up. You, know, you want the doctor to go in as something respectable and presentable, right? You want the doctor to look yeah, at you and be like, "That's a nice to, ass." Yes. You want him to be able to find it first. Correct. All right. Thank Man, you, mama. If y'all don't cut it out, the hair don't got nothing to do with it. It's all about your insides being clean. That's how they can make sure everything good in there. It ain't got nothing to do with the hair. I don't want it to be a Willie Mammoth though. The doctor coming in like, "Whoa!" Like you know, it just. I don't know. So you don't care. You don't care. You don't care about it being a Willie Mammoth when gear back there. But when you when for the doctor. All right, let's go to another caller. Hello, who's this? Said, bro. Hey, this is Sean from Houston. What's going on? What's up, brother? Sean. Hey, been calling in for, I guess, a word of encouragement for, uh, for uh, what's his name? Uh, My name is Envy, sir. Yeah, Envy, Envy, yeah. What's up, Envy? Yeah, what's man, up? I had it done five years ago. And it, it's not bad, but what's, what's, <laughs> what's funny on my part, when they gave me the anesthesia, it didn't put me to sleep right on, I guess, not fast enough. And I felt that doctor putting that lube on my butt. I said, say, man, what's going on with y'all? <laughs> and uh, that next thing, you know, it's just like Charlemagne said, you out. And I woke up, everybody was sitting there laughing. They never heard nobody say, you know, say, uh, you know, they'll be rubbing on my butt. <laughs> but after that, <laughs> hey, but check it out, though. After that, man, it's going to be good. I mean, uh, you know, you go, you're going to have a bunch of gas. I don't know about having a hard on like Charlemagne yeah, said. But, you didn't have a hard on. Yeah, but. Nah, nah, nah. But you're going to have a bunch of gas, man. I mean, bunch of gas. You, you got to fart before you leave. So you okay. That's a good thing. All right. Thank you, brother. I don't remember oh, wait, 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 Don't hang up on him. You, you hung up? You still there? Damn, hung up on him. I don't I remember being gassy. I was starving, though. I know that much. I told I'm hungry now. I hop up. 800-585-1051. We're asking. Uh, I got my colonoscopy today. Just want to talk to you guys. Kind of nervous, I ain't gonna lie. It's the Breakfast Club, good morning. Nervous about what? I know it now, I know it now, I know it now, I know it now. That you know if you deal with that. Call me. Get your opinion to the Breakfast Club top. Come on. 800-585-1051. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Now, if you're just joining us, we're explaining that today I have my colonoscopy. And what that is, is pretty much they shove a camera up your butt and look for polyps and things that uh, is cancerous. And they cut it out and try to treat it now, treat it early before it spreads and, and goes too far. And there's so many celebrities from Chadwick Boseman that passed away to Combat Jack that passed away to uh, Sharon peace. Osbourne and Daryl Strawberry and so many other people that have had colon cancer. Uh, but they want you to check it early. So if you have uncles, your dad, uh, yourself, you know, get checked as early as you can because you want to be here as long as you can for your kids. Forget about the finances. Yeah. Money's all good, but you want to be there to see your kids grow and go to your kids' basketball games, and football games, and all that stuff. So yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of nervous. I had a lot of questions. Yeah, I got I got mine done over the holidays. You know what I mean? And um, you know, I had no polyps, no cancer, no redness. And I told Envy the hardest part is gonna be the prep. You know, because once you get there, it's easy breezy, which is why I don't know why he put his appointment at three o'clock in the afternoon. That's just ridiculous. My appointment was early in the morning. And literally, when the doctor tells you, I'm going to put this IV in your arm. And when you wake up, it's going to be all over. It's going to be all over. And that's it. There's really no after effects. So maybe, maybe a little soreness in the booty hole once the drugs wear off. But other than that, you good. All right. All right. Well, the reason I did it is because I thought I was going to be able to come to work today. 
Yeah, you're an ass. You're an idiot. I'm about to say you're an a hole. <laughs> but number one, you can't say that on the radio. And number two, I, I, I'm gonna be sensitive to your a hole this morning because, you know, I know what your a hole is about to go through. Oh, oh thanks. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hey, what's your name? My name's John. John, talk to us, John. Hi, John. Oh man, my colonoscopy. I had a blast. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Tell us about it. Oh, man, uh, it actually wasn't that bad, uh, except for the prep. The prep, they, they you don't just have one laxative to clean you out. You got two of them, and then you have to take that with some Gatorade, and then it cleans you all out. You have a blast. But Gatorade, the, water. the thing itself is not that bad. Now, no, let me ask you a question, John. How old are you, John, if you don't yeah. mind me asking? 35. Why'd you get it so early? But I got some, I got some, I got some problems, and I mm -hmm. I had to get checked out. So I would I would recommend anyone who is um, having serious problems don't don't let it don't let it sit and wait. You gotta you gotta okay. get that checked out. Now, John, let me ask you a question. At age thirty five. Yeah. Now, this is a little personal. Did you manscape back there before the doctor went all Man, in you, or you just left it all hairy, questions. scary? Well, not. I don't need to manscape that much. I'll give you a little TMI since you're asking. Uh oh. But uh, no. Even though as a lady doctor, I'm sure she liked what she saw. <laughs> okay, John. Hey, John, you're giving real bottom energy. You a bottom? <laughs> Am I a bottom? Well, I mean, I'm not picky. Exactly. <laughs> My bad, John. Have did you get day, erect? John. Charlemagne got erect after his, did you? No, I didn't. Um, basically how it was, um, well, the, I take that back. I said the prep was the worst part. The IV was the worst part because they got to knock you out for it. You're not awake for it. Um, and then it felt like a really nice nap. And then, I don't know, I was, I was floppy. Thank you, sir. That's right. Just remember, man, uh, he's 35, but, you know, they did recently lower the minimum screening age uh, to 45 from 50. So it's, it's so many people that are eligible to get screened right now that need to get screened. All right. Well, I got to make sure. And this is something, like I said, I got it's not about money. It's not about finances. I just want to be there for my kids and whatever it takes, whatever I got to check, whether it's my heart, whether it's my lungs, whether it's breathing. That's why I did the thing with my nose to, that I can sleep better and, and, and you know, and, and not snore as well, much. You whatever got, it you takes. You got a nose job. You got a nose job not, because you, know, you, want, to be on, job. you, want, you want to be on TV more. But I, I do want to salute um, the Colorectal Cancer Alliance. You know, uh, I partnered with the Colorectal Cancer Alliance, you know, on a couple of, you know, um, campaigns uh, mm -hmm. over the past couple of years you know to raise awareness and reduce the stigma around getting screened for colon cancer because you know this is a preventable cancer and if you catch it and treat it early there's a 90 percent survival rate did you hear what i just said wow. it's a 90 percent survival rate if you catch it and treat it early so you know we owe it to our families and our community and and our culture to get screened and uh, like i was saying all morning the recent lowering of the minimum screening age to 45 from 50 by the United States Preventive Services Task Force makes more black Americans eligible to get screened. So uh, go out there and get screened. Do, you owe it to yourself. You owe it to your family. That's how I feel. Absolutely. All right. And I'll fill you guys in tomorrow. I'm going to be at work tomorrow. I can come to work tomorrow, right? They said I can come to work tomorrow. You can come to work tomorrow. I just want to know if you get that big Woody. Yo, shut up, man. All right. Rumors on the way. We got to talk about Krishan and Blueface. Uh, I, I, I don't like their relationship, but we'll talk about it more when we come back. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Rumor has it. Rumor, rumor has it. Call out a name or you gossiping or you chatty patty. I don't gossip it. This is The Rumor Report. I mean, I guess we on The Breakfast Club. This is where the tea spills, right? Yes. Right. On The Breakfast Club. So if you don't know who Krishan is, Krishan is the young woman that's dating Blueface. She's the lady that she's missing a tooth. And they you know, they've been all over the internet, all over social media. Their relationship is very toxic. But she announced uh, a couple of days ago that she is having a baby. My emotions are crazy. Um, they just took my blood pressure and stuff like that. And the only reason I feel like I'm so overwhelmed right now is because I'm deciding to keep it, obviously. 
Now, Blueface responded on Instagram, of course, or social media, I should say. To answer all your questions, yes, me and Krishan Rock are officially done. It's strictly business. I tried it, and it clearly wasn't given, uh, it wasn't helping or doing anything with the relationship. She's pregnant with somebody else's child. So he's saying that the baby is not his. Well, she responds to that, and she talks about uh, Blueface actually being in the baby's life and if she needs him. Yeah, I got a baby in the oven, and I make my own money, but I don't want to abort a kid. I've been aborting since I met this dude, and I was aborting at first because we wasn't as serious, and I didn't have all my money together. But now that I make, like, over six figures, I don't need you. I could tell the chi- the kids that you died. You feel me? Like, we can say you don't exist. Like, I don't need a baby daddy. I don't need child support. I got God, my friends. You the type to hit me up tonight and f*** the shit out of me and f*** me again. So I don't know or if this beef is a real beef. I'm keeping this baby for me. And that's that. Um, I want a new beginning. And that's what it is. You still with me, Charlemagne? I'm with you, man. But, you know, I truly don't understand why so many people are invested in the dysfunction of those two individuals. You know, and it amazes me how folks have all these convos about what shouldn't be platformed. But yet I see these individuals on the blogs every day and I see them on podcasts all the time. And they got TV, a TV show on the Zeus network. Like everybody watches this type of dysfunction until something incredibly bad happens. And then everyone will have something to say when the reality is this is the type of content that shouldn't be platformed. And number one, you know, it's it's clear they don't need to be together. They're not good for each other. And number two, that young lady needs help mentally and emotionally. And I hope the people around her who actually love her get her the help she needs. But keeping a camera in her face to make a dollar is whack as hell. But well, well, wait, it gets worse. All right. So we tell you she's pregnant. Then Blueface was having a birthday party at his crib, his 26th birthday party. And I guess Krishan was she pulled up. And <laughs> yeah, you can play. Yeah, so uh, she said she wasn't fighting. She said she was breaking something up and it wasn't a fight. And then also, as she was at the premiere of their new show that's coming out on Zoo, she allegedly got into a fight with her stylist as well. A lot going on. A lot going on. I'm old, man. I'm 44. I like peace. I don't find anything that, you know, those two individuals are doing entertaining. And like I said, I hope that, you know, the people around her who actually love her get her the help she needs keeping the camera in her face, you know, just to make a dollar, you know, just to get hits on your blog, that's whack as hell. Yeah, and, until and, and, something and, and, happens. And don't, exactly, don't wait, and wait, don't wait until mm-hmm. something happens to write your stupid ass think pieces with no thought, okay? And, 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 and sit around and act like y'all care because if y'all truly cared, y'all would be trying to intervene now and y'all wouldn't be giving, um, giving that kind of content a platform. Absolutely. All right. And also, let's talk to Cardi B. Now, Cardi B has to do community service. We tell you this a couple of days ago. She had to get an extension. She has 15 days of community service. I think she did three already. And she talks about doing community service. These past two days, I've been doing community service. And I have learned things um, about myself. It was just such an experience today. So yesterday, I have learned about veterans. You know, we all celebrate Veterans Day. And, you know, we always be like, thank you to our soldiers. But I don't know anybody that ever went to war. I don't know any veterans. And I have learned that a lot of veterans, they go through so much. And, like, this country or a lot of countries, they don't, like, provide the proper service to our veterans or to our ex-soldiers and everything. Like, a lot of them um, suffer from PTSD and a lot of them turn to drug abuse because they're trying to escape all of the things that they went through. And it's just so sad that it, it, it gets, it hurts me because it's like, wow, these people are really fighting for us. It's- yeah, right. we talk about this a lot up here. And uh, right. shout to all the veterans out there. Uh, and I'm glad she's doing community service. Charlamagne, you ever had to do community service? No, I never had to do community service. I don't think so. No, I always went to jail. Oh, damn I never it, had to do community service. Salute all right. to uh, all the veterans, though, man. What Cardi said is absolutely right. Nothing pisses me off more than seeing homeless veterans in these streets. Veterans that actually went to fight for this country and now they can't even get room and board. We've said it a million times. Veterans should get uh, free health insurance. Veterans mm-hmm. should get room and board. They should get uh, a, a stipend every month, you know, to be able to pay their bills. Like, veterans should be well taken care of in this country. 
All right. And lastly, Morris Chestnut was on The Daily Show and was talking about uh, how he deals with panic attacks. How do you deal with the panic attacks? I mean, you wrote a whole book about it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like, because that can help women just as much as men. How do you deal with panic attacks? How do you, you know, is there breathing exercises? Is there something yeah. that you do? Well, I, I got a new therapist now. And uh, my, my new therapist told me something that's really interesting. You know, he, he said, uh, he said, faith and anxiety can't coexist. Mm. So whenever you have those panic attacks, whenever you have those anxiety attacks, you got to tell yourself your own hero story. And I know it may sound arrogant, but no, you really no, got to tell yourself how far you have came. You know, you have to tell okay. yourself, you know, what you've overcome. You know, you have to talk about the, the good things that, you, you know, you, you do for yourself, the good things you do for people. And I think that's something that we don't do enough. We don't tell ourselves our own hero story. So much of us are getting on social media waiting for a bunch of strangers that we don't even know to validate us through likes and retweets and everything else. I'm sorry, that wasn't Morris Chestnut. That was Charlamagne the God. Well, I mean, same design. Shut same, up, man. <laughs> same, same model. Same factory model. But no, uh, for real, tell yourself your own hero story, okay? For everybody out there that deals with anxiety, when you get those panic attacks, tell yourself your own hero story, man. Be your own cheerleader. You know, Jay-Z has a great line. Remind yourself. Nobody built like you. You design yourself. Sometimes we got to do that. We forget to do that. All right. And that is your rumor report. All right. The People's Choice Mix is up next. Don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Your company has goals this year. Find the right people to help you achieve them with ZipRecruiter, where four out of five employees get a quality candidate within the first day. Try it free at ZipRecruiter.com slash breakfast. ZipRecruiter.com slash breakfast. B-R-E-A-K-F-A-S-T. Hey, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Uh, again, I want to shout out to the New York Giants. You guys had a great season this year. We'll take it. You know, shout to... Uh, uh, DJ, shout out to Saquon Barkley, shout out to everybody in the Giants organizations and, and, and fam. I, I appreciate you guys. You guys had DJs actually DJing the game this year. It's just, it was a lot of fun this season. So hopefully we uh, make some proper trades and get some 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 good some better guys in, in some you know positions, and uh, we'll be right back there next year. Oh, whoa, you want to get some better guys in some positions, <laughs> huh? What positions would those be, Envy? Have you thought about it? I'm huh? getting my colonic today, sir. I know you're gonna be face down, ass up. Actually, you're gonna be on your side. <laughs> You're going to be on your side. They're going to take you to the left, to the left. So wait a minute. If my doctor puts me on my face and, and tells me to toot it, I'm at the wrong doctor? If your doctor tells you face down ass up something wrong. I don't know, though. Every doctor does it different. My doctor told me to uh, lay on my side, so I had to lay on my side. So I was sideways with it. Okay. Sideways with it. Sideways with it. Sideways right. with it. Sideways with it. You're going to be fine, though. I can't wait to hear about your experience afterwards. Jesus. Especially the erection part, because I got an okay. erection. And nobody has been able to tell me. Uh, well, no, I, I, I did have a doctor tell me why that happened. But he said it was the drugs. Out of, out of the nine, ten people that called this morning, nobody had an erection but you. Well, I'm different. Okay. All right. All right. Well, you want to say anything to your cowboy, your cowboy nation, your cowgirls, whatever you call them? No, because I had no expectations for my cowboys. I told y'all that. I told. I, I had zero expectations. I saw how we were playing, you know, the last few weeks of the regular season. I didn't think we were going to beat Tampa Bay. I had zero expectations. The defense had been shaky the last few weeks of the regular season, and Dak Prescott has been very inconsistent, you know, and he throws a lot of interceptions. So I didn't have any expectations for my cowboys going into the game against the 49ers. So, All right. No, you know, I, I've, right. I've emotionally disconnected myself from my Dallas Cowboys. I love my team, and that's going to always be my team. But y'all ain't going to have me with high blood pressure every year. Mm -mm. All right. Well, when we come back, we got the positive notice to Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Shout out to everybody in the 757. I was uh, out in Virginia Saturday, and shout out to everybody at Holy Cross College out in uh Worcester, Massachusetts. I was uh, out there. Uh, my son was doing a visit. Um, they're trying to uh, get him to come there. And I love the school. School was dope. Small town, very, very dope school. Uh, great education, great football team. So I just want to shout to, to all of them. I had a great time this weekend out there with you guys. Now, Charlamagne, you got a positive note? I do have a positive note, and it's simple, man. Uh, just going back to what I said when I was on The Daily Show last week uh, with the good sister Leslie Jones, um, you got to tell yourself your own hero story, man. You have to. You have to provide yourself with the love, kindness, and respect you deserve. All right? Be your own best friend, your own cheerleader. Amen. Breakfast Club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done?